So when is it time to hang up the headphones and quit your volunteer position at church? It's kind of a tricky matter, so let's talk about it. Volunteering is tricky business, especially when you're exiting. When things are going well, it's awesome, but sometimes things change and we've got to adjust the commitments that we have and things that were important or exciting to us before might not be so exciting anymore. So how do we make that decision and then how do we make that transition? We're gonna walk you through that in this video. Now I apologize for the clickbaity title and thumbnail, but here we are. When we start volunteering, it can be either exciting or there's a really pressing need and we're the only ones there to jump in. But sometimes the role evolves or our life circumstances change and we need to reevaluate whether or not this is still a good fit. It gets complicated because sound is pretty essential to the church service and people tend to rely on people that are faithful. So if you're watching this, Thank you for being faithful in the first place. If you didn't have the consistency and commitment and integrity to keep your word, this wouldn't be an issue. So the first thing to do if you're considering quitting a volunteer position is go back to the why. Why did you sign up to run sound in the first place? Maybe somebody recruited you and there was nobody else to jump in and you were willing and able, or somewhat able, and you did it anyway, even if you didn't have all the skills to start. Maybe you started because you love audio and love mixing, and it's a joy to serve where you're at, and the task itself is exciting. Other times you jump in because you're serving the mission and the vision of the organization that you're serving with. You see lives being changed and transformed, and you'll do whatever needs to be done to get the meeting to happen. Any of these and all of these are great reasons to serve as a volunteer. Yes, you're giving your time and your energy, but it's going to a worthy cause, and God even remembers when we give a cup of cold water to a little kiddo. You can bet he's not gonna forget that time when you fixed the sound system with a chewing gum wrapper, a paper clip, and a roll of gaff tape. When we recognize what we wanted to do in the first place, then we can start to recognize what's different or what's keeping me from having the joy that I had when I started at first. Maybe the way that the job started out is not the way the job is going right now. I mean, give an example or a theoretical. Perhaps you started out at a very small church and there was a certain amount of hominess, the expectations were low, there were things that were spontaneous, but as things grew, which healthy things grow, there's multiple services, there's time restraints, and things have to be a lot more structured and get people in and get people out on time. I'm not saying one of these is better than the other, but it's important to recognize what you enjoyed about a task rather than what's the task requiring right now. Maybe you've done such a great job in improving things where you are that now the expectations are a lot higher and it's more than one person can carry. Some people are meant to pioneer things and other people are meant to manage. They don't always overlap. So if your job was pioneering and now it's a managing job, maybe it's not a good fit for you anymore and it's okay to recognize that. You've gotta be brutally honest about what brings you joy. And just because something changed doesn't necessarily mean that it's time to quit, but you need to take stock of what's actually going on in your heart and with the role that you're in. At the risk of sounding vain, I'm gonna throw this out there and you can roast me in the comments if you want, but musical style matters a lot. If you don't love mixing the musical style that the worship team is playing that connects with your congregation, maybe it's time to mix somebody else. I'll use an extreme example and you can see where the parallels lie. Imagine your church hired a new worship leader from Bavaria, and they insisted on replacing the bass guitar with a tuba and leading from accordion, all polka, all the time. Now, I don't have a problem with polka music. I just don't want to mix it. So it's fine if that's what's going to connect with your congregation, but you have to recognize, hey, I'm not wired for this kind of music. Maybe it's time for me to step away and serve somewhere else. Now on the flip side of that, we also have to submit our personal preferences to what's gonna serve the congregation. And if you can do that, sometimes if you prefer heavy metal, but your church likes folk and country, you're gonna have to adjust the way that you EQ your kick drum and guitars to make it fit what serves the congregation. Nobody comes to a church service for the audio engineer, unless maybe you're watching this and maybe you've done that one time. If you have, let me know who you've gone to see in the comments below. But most of the time, people are coming to a church service to worship, and that means that they're served with the music that helps them sing. It's not about you. It's about everybody else coming to worship Jesus. If the jump is too big for you from the musical styles that you'll like or will tolerate 
and the music that they're playing, it's okay to say, hey, I'm gonna step out and not have to over-spiritualize it or make up fake spiritual reasons. You were wired a certain way musically, and that's okay. If I had one piece of advice for people with a family who are serving either as a volunteer or in full-time ministry, it's this. Don't sacrifice your family on the altar of ministry. After your personal salvation, your first responsibility is taking care of your family and making sure that they have the time and attention that they need in order to thrive. That includes your vocation, whether that's working outside the home or making a home as a stay-at-home mom or dad. If you're neglecting from those areas of your life to serve at church, something's out of order and you need to reevaluate your priorities. I believe that when we stand before the Father at the end of our life and give account, he's gonna ask a whole lot less about the church sound system than he is gonna be your spouse and your children. Even if you're trying to save the church a bunch of money by doing it yourself, ask yourself if it's worth the price you pay for the time spending away from your family. I can't make that decision for you. That's one you've gotta make on your own. Another fear that we have as church sound techs is that nobody will survive a dip in audio quality, but I'm here to tell you that they will. As church sound techs that love to pursue excellence and do a great job, we have this underlying fear, whether or not we can vocalize it or not, that nobody's gonna survive if the audio quality dips one week. The truth is, if your church gets up and walks out because the audio quality isn't quite up to par one week, you've got much bigger problems than your volunteering situation. Whether you're stepping away or dialing back your commitment level, it's gonna be okay as you train somebody else to take your place if it's not as good as it always is. Now granted, we don't let everything blow up, so make sure that as you're stepping back, you've set up systems for other people to succeed, but it's okay to let go a little bit. You can really let go and you can really train somebody else. Maybe instead of quitting, you really just need to build a team around you. Unfortunately, that takes a little bit more time and effort than you're currently using. So even though you're stretched thin, maybe you've got to give a little bit extra, but the end result is that either you can walk away or you can serve in a limited capacity and things still function. While we're on the topic, I will do a shameless plug for Worship Sound Wisdom University, where I've got a train the trainer course, where I teach you my playbook for bringing on new team members and making sure that they enjoy it and they get all the skills that they need quickly so that they can be up and running and you can step back or step away if you need to. You can check out information for that through the link in the description below. Another obstacle that keeps us in a volunteer position for longer than we should stay is we find our identity in our role as the lead volunteer or as the sound tech for the church. Just like with our family priorities, our identity priorities get out of whack when we say, this is my role or the way that I do things is who I am. That's not how we were made. One of the freedoms we have in Christ is that we can have our same identity whether we're sitting at the feet of Jesus like Mary or we're serving in the kitchen like Martha. No matter the role, our heart posture needs to be, I am loved by God, no matter where I'm serving or not serving. There are times to be a regular congregant where you're sitting in the seats, worshiping like a normal person. Granted, I love worshiping while I'm running the soundboard, but I also need to have that experience of being a congregant, joining with the church and going through the motion. Part of the good news of the gospel is that we're not evaluated by what other people think or even what we think of ourselves, we're evaluated by what God thinks. It reminds me of when John baptized Jesus and Jesus hadn't done anything in his ministry yet and yet the heavens open and the father says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. He hadn't done any miracles yet. He hadn't served anybody yet. He had just been working as a carpenter. Some of you need to hear that your Father in Heaven is pleased with you even if you're not running sound. Your role is not your identity. Another fear that keeps us from stepping back from a volunteer position when we really need to is that the role is not the relationship. Yeah, it's really easy to have our relationships formed around the systems and structures that we have. It takes us extra effort to reach out to somebody to have relational time outside of our commitments. As men specifically, we tend to have our friends around work and around the activities that we do more than just getting together for relationship's sake. So if you're gonna step away from the position, know that that relationship doesn't have to suffer. It takes a little more effort. You might not see everybody on a scheduled regular basis, but you can schedule that yourself and it is important. I'd encourage you if you are gonna step away, make that extra effort. You don't wanna abandon the relationships that you've formed over time 
just because it's not time to serve in that particular position anymore. Proverbs 18.1 says this, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all sound wisdom. So don't isolate yourself. You wanna stay in community, even if it's time to stop serving in this role. At the risk of sounding trite and churchy, you really do need to pray about the decision whether or not to keep going in your role as a volunteer sound tech. As you're thinking about these things and weighing them, it's not always black and white or cut and dry. You have to be able to discern what's just laziness that you have to fight against or time to step away because it's sapping energy instead of giving it to you. One thing that helps me a lot is prayer journaling. It gets my thoughts out on the page and it opens up my heart to be able to hear from God in that moment when I've got my pen on the paper. Another thing to do is to ask a friend to pray with you. Sometimes they can see blind spots that you don't see. Maybe it's something where you really need to get out and you haven't yet, and they can help you understand that. Or maybe they'll be able to point to the fact that you really were called to serve in sound and that some things might need to change, but not your volunteer position. Getting counsel from others in this and having other people speaking into your lives that might not even be part of the situation is invaluable. I highly recommend it. We all have blind spots and trusted friends can help us see when things are kind of muddy. You can't just cut 100 hertz on your thoughts and make things more clear. Sometimes you really need to resign when it's a toxic environment to serve in. Now the flip side of this coin is that we bear with one another's weaknesses and love, forgiving, repenting, and working through our salvation as we go from unredeemed to redeemed through that long process. Unfortunately, there are situations when leaders don't have the character that match their calling and their gifting. And so the same things either get hidden or go on unaddressed for a long time. People have issues and that's gonna happen. But when they have issues, we have to deal with it in the right way. First, we have to deal with things in our own hearts. Remember the parable of the speck in somebody's eye and the plank in your own? You have to evaluate what's going on in your own life, but we don't stop there. We actually have to still go to our brother or our sister and say, hey, I see this in you. I struggle with it too. Let's work on this together. If that happens and things still don't change, sometimes it's time to walk away with a clean conscience, knowing that you've addressed the situation, you've done your part, and you can have clean hands. You're good to go. We also have to remember that forgiveness is imperative to our faith. 1 Corinthians 13.4 says, love suffers long and is kind. Sometimes we have to really bear one another's burdens and bear with each other's weaknesses, even if that pushes on our own pain places as well. So if it's time to walk away, make sure that you're not drinking the poison of unforgiveness, hoping the other person gets sick. Walk in forgiveness, seek reconciliation, and know sometimes it's okay to walk away. That's really between you, the Holy Spirit, and a trusted advisor. I pray you have the wisdom to know what to do when in those tricky situations. If you are resolving because of interpersonal issues, try to be at peace and resolve them as best you can, but have a clear conscience when you walk away. If you've sought to address the problems, they haven't been resolved and it's time to resign, don't bring those up when it's your resignation time. Let's talk about what to actually do when you resign. The first thing to do is to plan a transition rather than an immediate stop. Nobody likes to be surprised, and everybody likes some lead-in time of, hey, I've got to make this switch. Let's make sure that we make that transition easy on the people that are coming after me. This is a great place to treat others the way that you would want to be treated if you were walking into a new volunteering position. It also shows dignity to the people who you've been serving with, and it goes a long way to preserving that relationship. Remember, we don't want to throw away relationships because our position changed. The other way to keep dignity in your resignation is to keep it impersonal. And I don't mean that you're cold or rude, but you have to make it about the position, the time commitment, or just straight up about the musical style. And you don't have to be grumpy about any of those. With the appropriate leader outside of the time when you're serving, I really hope you don't drop this on Sunday morning right before the service, say, hey, it's time for me to transition. I'm gonna give it four more weeks. These are the things that aren't fitting or these are the priorities that have changed for me and I wanna make this transition go well for you, but I can't serve in this position, in this capacity anymore. And then smile. Again, make sure that you maintain the relationships that you've formed, because not every activity is for every season of life, and it's okay to recognize that and move on from a volunteering position. Being the church sound tech doesn't define us or give us status in the kingdom of God. 
We have to remove our identity from what we do so that we can do what we're actually called to do or what's most important to us. And finally, because nobody's ever said it enough for you, thank you for running sound. I appreciate you. I know when you do a great job, nobody notices. And I appreciate when you do that because you're helping people draw their attention to something else other than the sound system. It takes work, it takes guts, and I appreciate everything that you do. So whether you're passing the torch onto somebody else or you're training a team so that you can carry the burden together, thank you for running sound and I hope your resignation goes well. Maybe I should have titled this, How to Quit and Stay Legit. Either way, remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.